You're welcome back to the Pulse on the Joy News channel on Multi TV. And, and as always, your views and comments are welcome on this show. Uh, look for us on our social media handles at Joy News on TV, on Facebook, as well as on Twitter. Add the hashtag The Pulse. We'll be glad to share your thoughts with the rest of the world. And indeed, the countdown is on. We have, what, 22, 23 days to go to the elections. But the assurance is coming in from the president that this election will be safe and secure. Now, it follows a weekend of a lot of action, especially uh, the residents of um, the NPP presidential candidate, Nana Adadakwe Kufuado. It started out as um, a health walk on a regular Sunday morning. It turned into a clash between supporters of the NDC and the security detail bodyguards at the residence of Nana Ekufu Ado. And subsequently, there have been a lot of accusations and counter accusations. Who did what? Who threw the punch first? Uh, what's going to happen now? The National Peace Council also has been speaking about issues that uh, have to be resolved in earnest. But the president is making the assurance following uh, the weekend violence between supporters of the governing NDC and the security detail of the MPP, presidential candidate Nana Kufado at his Nima residence yesterday. Both parties are blaming each other for what they call unprovoked attacks. We'll hear from the president shortly. But before that, the NDC Greater Accra Region Chairman Joseph Adekoka insists that the party supporters put the stones of the MPP because they were first attacked. Speaking in my capacity as the chairman, as the chairman of the party, and we in the region are saying, and hear me clear and loud, we can't allow our people in the region to be maltreated, pushed around, shot at. They come to us, and we always appeal to them to come. We are asking the state authorities to take action immediately. We have every confidence in the state's leader. Those who are shooting out there, they know there's a state to leader. They know there's state law. And they violate it in, with impunity. And I've given you an example. We are not going to sit down for our boys, our members, to be harassed, around, shot at, from by the opposition party, and more so today's incident, we had a peaceful walk, and they started shooting from there, his president. Just like that. Just like Just that. Like that. Yes. 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 So that is why we are here today. And I'm giving you Victoria evidence, and we are saying that we have every confidence in the state spirit. But if, if somebody slaps you once, and you give your cheek and it's not the that you are not to stand. Okay. Nobody will intimidate NDC under my watch. Nobody will get that crap will intimidate NDC. We are peace loving people. And like I said to you this morning, we had a peaceful march. And we did all of and I, I, keep, I keep telling you, they are the ones who keep stalking us. And they should advise their their, their followers. To stop stalking us. But if you keep the control stalking us, we we'll also stop them. But the New Patriotic Party disagrees. Acting Chairman Freddie Blay says the MPP was first attacked. He says the party has also warned its supporters they will be punished if they foment trouble. Meanwhile, Dr. Enin says various political parties have failed to address violent attacks adequately. Well, I'm not too sure that the political parties over the last 18 months or so have shown a consistent interest driven by shared values, shared norms, and shared principles to, to isolate and to punish those of their members who flout the rules. And I'm happy the chair <coughs> of one of the parties is, is in your studio. If you read the manifestos of all the political parties, none of them advocate any shift of violence, hate speech, abuse, intimidating language. So I think the top political official in your studio must help us with it. Why is it difficult for political parties to discipline their members whose behavior, you know, sends a signal that is contrary to the party's principles and values? And I think this is a broader conversation that we shouldn't wait to have after the election. We, we should start having that conversation now. I know during the primary, there were certain instances of indiscipline 
and both major parties discipline some of the people who were involved. But I think we need to do much more across the country, saying, look, this is the only country that we, we have. This party does not support such behavior, and we will consistently punish those who flout the behavior so that it serves as a deterrent. Well, that's uh, Dr. Kusinin. He's a security expert. Let's now hear from the president, John Mahama, assuring the nation today that there will be peace during the elections. One of the things that has made Ghana an attractive place for doing business is our stability and our democracy and the respect for rule of law. And it's something that we will continue to work at. Um, often when we're getting to an election, the political rhetoric ratchets up. I urge you not to be... Uh, afraid or frightened that it is going to lead to any blow up. I mean, Ghana, you know, has a history of peaceful, transparent, and successful elections. And I believe that the seventh election under the Fourth Republic is going to be no different. I'll play my part as President and uh, Commander in Chief to ensure that we have a stable, secure environment for people to cast their ballots. And um, I believe that once the elections are over, you know, the people of Ghana will decide who they want to lead them over the next four years and whoever uh, emerges, all of us must support the person. Right then, uh, joining us in the studio is the Executive Secretary for the Small Arms Commission, Mr. Joe Sapler. Thank you, sir, for joining us today. Uh, thank you very uh, much, we, my brother. We have been monitoring the space from over the weekend. I'm sure that for the Commission as well, concerns about violence clearly go hand in hand with the proliferation of arms. As a commission, how do you view the past few days, incidences in Wallensi, in Accra, in other parts of the country? I mean, we have also been worried, just like any Ghanaian. But the, I mean, we have a basis for why things are like that. Mm. I mean. If you monitor the recent uh, baseline survey that was uh, done by the Kofi Annan Center for the Small Arms Commission, fingered elections as one of the things that trigger uh, incidents of proliferation of Why? weapons. Oh, when there's going to be elections, people want to own weapons and they want to take advantage, they want to intimidate people, etc. So, uh, weapon demand goes up, or weapon demand, or weapon proliferation goes up when it's getting to elections. And so, uh, what our report suggested is that, look, you don't need to look at the traditional factors of fuel proliferation, the chieftaincy, the land, the, the border issues, etc. You also need to look at elections. And rightly so, Kenya is very fresh in our minds. We know what resulted from the electoral challenges in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Liberia and Sierra Leone, where we can talk now, they are about 17, 20 years old. So we can say that uh, probably. Uh, they are really not relevant, but they are very, very relevant. And so for us, sitting at the commission, uh, we know that when it comes to elections, the things that really can impact negatively on our elections, I mean, proliferation of weapons, there's a result of a lot of factors that you know. And then the issue about the speech, the hate speech, etc., with the National Media Commission is uh, looking at. Okay. But again, based on the analysis you've just done, based on the survey you've done, the proliferation of arms, how do we deal with this? Because some, some, some look from outside and say, what is happening? How can we deal with this so that these guns or these arms or these violent acts do not degenerate into the Kenyans that you speak of? A lot, a lot is being done. You know, the, uh, I mean, weapon proliferation is demand and supply. When it comes to the, the supply side, a lot is being done. That's where you look at your laws and you look at the, where the ease with which people obtain weapons and try and tighten a few not here and there. But... Uh, what we're doing now from the Small Arms Commission, the, our contribution is that we are looking at the hotspots that have been declared by the police and the, uh, and the Electoral Commission. And we are trying to do a community engagement with them, trying to get the, um, the opinion leader, the Polka Party, to see reason that look, violence is not in anybody's interest. And so, if you've monitored the airways recently, we've, we've been in Bimbila, we've been in Boku, we've been in um, Tamale, we've been in Bolgatanga. So one thing that came up, which I believe we've drawn the attention of um, some of our 
um, bosses is that, look, we need to look at elections very well. But one of the things that came up in the Boku Town Hall meeting is that, look, when it comes to even the selection of the people who assist the electoral commission, you know they are going to recruit ordinary people to assist them. Yes. I think about five per polling station. One of the things that came that they raised is that, look, we are supposed to critique because they are, they are laid down criteria for anybody to qualify to do that job. If you are somebody who is known to, to be active in a particular political party, you don't qualify. Yeah. But when you come and put the names up without pictures, we, won't, we can't help you. Because if you come to Boku, you mention said you do so. We have 20 said you do so. We can only help you and raise qu queries and questions about it when there are pictures attached to the names. And so this is something that we have raised. We have sent the appropriate members to where it has to mm. go to see what comes there. So elections really creates a lot of tension, and tensions also lead to um, proliferation. Because people have a false perception that when they are holding guns, they are strong. It's wrong. It's a, it's a, it's a wrong perception. Look, you cannot defend yourself. You can't. Have, what happened on Sunday, we all thank God that it didn't degenerate. But if it had degenerated, I mean, we won't be sitting here talking about what we are talking exactly. about. Exactly. But since you speak of stopping things from happening, stopping things from you know degenerating into something else then i need to ask are you satisfied with the work of the ghana police service in terms of quelling any potential violence and also the issue of people holding arms which are not licensed for now when it comes to the sunday incident it's, it's very difficult for me sitting here because i have not received the full uh, report mm. Um, I've seen some of the pictures. What we need to do, as Dr. Nin suggested, is first of all, check whether the person was holding that, those pump actions, etc., and the, those pistols that we saw are licensed to bear the firearms. So that is the first stage that we expect the police. But the point is that, you see, uh, when it gets to elections, and when it comes, it comes to security, citizens play a very key role, you understand? And so the police alone really, you know they are challenged. How many are they? for the 26 million of us, you understand? So we need to constantly, one of the things that we are urging in most of this, our community work is that, look, you have to help the police. And the information must be timely, it must be quick. And I'm sure this particular one, I don't know how quick the information went to the police, mm -hmm. but from some of the things that I've been monitoring, uh, it looks like the information didn't get to them that early. Uh, but even when they got there, they were able to, you know, calm the situation. That's what we all expect. The whole thing must, uh, is not about the kind of vigilance that uh, a lot of people or uh, intimidatory tactics. It won't work. Look, we had a, 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 a retreat with the political parties in May. And what the assurance they gave us is that, look, they would, they would denounce and renounce the use of uh, small arms and, and, and uh, firearms in our, in our elections or in our body politics. So what I'm seeing is a bit... Is it, not, is it also because when you make these appeals to them, yeah. they, can, they can only say, we will comply. But think about it. If, if from previous elections, you've seen these incidences happen over and again, you call it perception. But I'm sure for the ones who brandish these arms, from both sides, in fact, they have reason to. Because if there is no evidence that translate into something else, they will not continue doing it. I agree with you, but I think that in the recent media press um, that the Minister of Interior, I think he gave the police quite a lot of, uh, I mean, he empowered the police a lot to try and check things like what you are describing. He told the police that, look, treat every matter as a criminal matter. What we need to do is that we need to isolate the person from the group. And treat as a purely criminal matter. Investigate. So this matter, for instance, we expect the police to go and uh, get the pictures, check the, the persons, is it, is, it, is it registered to own a firearm? Because as per our laws, you can't, you give me your firearm. Mm -hmm. your, my wife cannot use my gun. The gun is licensed to me. My child cannot use my firearm. So the police just, so I believe that all these things will be done. I believe, let's give ourselves a week and see whether some of these things will fail. But I believe that, the Minister for the Interior and the Media Press gave enough uh, beef and strength to the police service that treat every matter as a crime. That's why you see them even now, even calling uh, reverend ministers who are making all kinds, who are giving all kinds of prophecies mm -hmm. to come and, you know, 
tell the police the basis for which they are saying what they are saying. Because what we don't want is anything that will plunge this country into There have been some suggestions, even before the weapon is used, the things that trigger the violence in the first place. Some men of God, as you just mentioned, are saying that maybe it's about time we begin to revise our notes on whether or not political parties should even be in organizing health walks in the first place. Because if it's meant to, in an instance, provoke a certain atmosphere, maybe we should begin to revise our notes. What do you say? It's very difficult. It's very difficult. I mean, these are ways. Of, I mean, every every uh, every political party has a way of energizing their grassroots. They have a way of they have their own strategies. And the strategy is that look, the way we, the, one of the ways we can govern as our support is go on a health walk. Mm -hmm. It's like a question that somebody asked me in one of these our 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 uh, community work. I can't remember whether it was in Bimbela, where they suggested that can we stop the licensing of firearms because we have elections. It's a very dicey question. How do you stop that? The, our laws are clear. If you are 18 years and above, you have a sound mind, you have the means, you have the capacity, you have a reasonable way of keeping your gun. The law just must give you um, a weapon. You understand? And so with me sitting as a small arms commission, what I don't want is that we should not try and glorify the weapon. You know what the police service, for instance, will not allow people to take weapons and the people who are providing security at the in, in polling stations are not allowed to bear firearms. They don't want to intimidate people. You are just there to express your opinion or to cast your vote. And you should not see a gun and be intimidated and you'll be frightened, etc. Mm -hmm. So I believe that a way to go for the what we've seen in Suhum, what we've seen in Kuku, uh, Kuku, yes, Wilens, all the, it's, it's about talking. But it is, you know, we have various ways of ensuring security. We have the preventive and the curative. Most of the time in Ghana, we always like the curative, curative where we use a lot of money. But I think that we must get to a level like they do it in the Western world, where they bend backwards and use the, um, the carrot approach. You go there, talk to the, 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 I mean the, the community, mm -hmm. show pictures of communities that have been devastated, destroyed as a result of proliferation of weapons and ask them, is that the way we want Ghana to go? So it's more about attitudinal change, moral suasion, and not entirely about enforcement. That is my take Your on view that. on that. Finally, uh, we know that the Interior Ministry announced about a month or two ago that um, there was a program to have people bring back their guns. Yeah. How far have we gone with that process? I mean, the process ended on 21st September, and we got close to 2,000 guns. Um, but as I speak, one of the one of the the thinking or one of the uh, philosophy driving uh, guns between me and my minister is that look, let's encourage people to register. So although the amnesty is over, in the amnesty we waived a lot of things. There's a license to possess, which is 700 Ghana, which was waived. And so what will you just pay is your license 200. But if somebody has a weapon and he, he wants to register it. We are prepared to assist the person. Because the, the, um, the literature suggests that if your weapon is licensed, you don't abuse the terms of the country. And you are known to law enforcement. So when it is used anywhere at any crime scene, it can be traced easily to you. And so we want to encourage people who have weapons to come, whether through me or whether through the police, we will encourage you to register your weapon. So at least we will know you. OK. 23 days to go to the elections. People see tension, they see these incidents, they are worried. What do we do? What we need to do is that we, I mean, as Ghanaians, I, I get, I, I, mean, I have been very worried about the fact that, look, we have over 80% voter turnout and still high levels of insecurity with our elections. I think it's something that we, with the, through the media, I mean, the peace enterprise, we all need to take the message out there. Look, where we are now is about talking, is about taking the message. Instead of Probably people expect uh, Ghana, uh, the government, to give the police more route gears and show brute force and that kind of thing. Where we are now is about trying to take the message, appealing to people's conscience that, look, if we have all accepted that, look, every four years we go and take a decision of who must lead us, it should not bring this level of vulnerabilities and insecurity that we see associated around this time. But I cannot say, as we go 23 days to the election, I can't say that it might come down. But I believe that the law enforcement officers, we all try and apply ourselves and see how we can 
manage the problem. What about the leaders of the political parties? Should they be doing more beyond just holding these conferences, accusing one party or the other? Well, I think that I, I think um, I'm, I'm in conversation with the, with the chief executive of the Peace Council to see what they can do on that on that score. Yes, because the trading of the accusations and the press conferences to lambast each other really also doesn't help the process. One of the things I've, I've been saying, which I'm very sure of, is that it is an irresponsible act eh, for any politician to arm any supporter because you cannot control the effects when a gun, a trigger is pulled. And I am also more than 300% 300 sure that, as Dr. Eni has always been saying, Ghana lives in a bad neighborhood, you understand, where we have experienced a lot of wars. And one of the things that I want Ghanaians to also know, they should not think that our neighbors around us are happy that Ghana is, is, is termed as an oasis of peace. A lot of people want Ghana to also go down, down that road so that we'll also be tagged in a certain way. They think that Ghana is pampered in the international community too much. So Ghanaians should not be too happy that our labors love us so much. If we provide the opportunities, eh, we call them conflict entrepreneurs. They will enter and they'll spoil this our country. Do we want to be refugees? I don't want to. Thank you, Mr. Appler, for your time. Clearly, uh, a lot needs to be done in this regard. We are preparing for the elections. This is what everyone is looking for in time to end. We'll go for a quick break. We'll come back. There'll be more for you here on the pulse. Stay with us.